Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about what it takes to be able to make art full time. And I'm gonna be drawing this. I thought it'd be helpful today to go into a bit more detail about how I pay the bills. And I want to preface this with some strategies for how you can start investing the time you need to in making art. Um, honestly, unless you're independently wealthy, none of the strategies are really easy or comfortable. And the less committed and focused you are on your goals, the more uncomfortable and difficult they are going to be. I also want to make clear that I'm talking about making it as an independent creator, specifically in my case, a comic book creator. This means I'm not trying to make money by making stuff for other people. I'm trying to make money by making my art for the most part. If you want to be a freelance artist or a video game artist or work for a big studio, in any way your approach is gonna be really different. I've tried to do freelance, I've worked for a big studio and it's not for me. Um, you can hear my explanation for why I quit working for Disney at the link here. So I'm not going to try and give you advice on getting into games or making it work with freelance. In fact, this really isn't advice at all since the pathway to making it work is so variable and so risky. Um, and it's really dependent on your particular circumstances. Instead, I want to try and paint a general picture of the problem that I think all of us face um, in trying to be a personal artist and just offer some strategies for approaching it. Um, so while I wouldn't really qualify this as advice, it does come from my own experience. So, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. So the first thing you have to understand is that making comics, A, takes a lot of time. It's incredibly time consuming just to make the art. And B, it also takes time to build up enough of an audience that you can start making money from your art. So you have these two tasks that are incredibly time intensive, but are also going to take you a long time from beginning to end just to finish, like months to years. So if you're under the impression that you can save up six months expenses and work full time for six months and get a career off the ground making your art, you're setting yourself up for failure um, and big financial problems. As a matter of fact, I would highly discourage taking this approach. It is perhaps the most inefficient use of a huge chunk of money that you could make. You're taking an incredible risk and it's most likely just flushing that money down the toilet. Now, like I said, I'm not talking about doing freelance. If you're doing freelance or if you have another concept that you can start making money on more quickly, that's a different matter. Or if you already have a big audience and finished work, maybe it makes sense. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Becoming an independent artist is an investment in yourself. And you have to think about it like any other investment. It's going to take time for the investment to mature. The best thing I can compare it to is uh, going to school, at least in regards to the types of education that directly lead to work like technical schooling or getting a law or a medical degree. You know, it may take you years to get to the point that you are supporting yourself just with the work you want to do. And so you need to find a way to cover your expenses during that time that you are investing in yourself. So let me offer some strategies for making it through the years that it's going to take before you can start making money doing what you're doing. Um, one, Find a way to dramatically reduce your monthly expenses uh, enough that you don't need to work full time or you can work part time and pay the bills. So some ways to do this, you know, live with family. We have this stupid idea in the United States that you're a loser if you live with your parents past 20. I don't know if it's like the mortgage industry or like the National Association of Landlords or whatever that came up with this idea, but honestly, not taking advantage of free housing especially when you're trying to make art is stupid. If you make your priority to pay for all your bills, you'll never get ahead far enough to make art. You know, for example, when I graduated from college, 
I was determined to be self-sufficient. And so the first thing I did was find an art job and start working. You know, flash forward 10 years later, and I was married, I bought a home, had a car and two kids. I was self-sufficient, but I wasn't moving forward on my art goals. So in this case, I had let my pride of wanting to look responsible and grown up keep me from focusing on the goal I really wanted, to make art. Um, If I were to do it again, I would seriously have looked into living with my parents. I know they would have had the extra space. Yeah, my ego would have taken a bruising, and maybe I would have lost some life lessons (laughs) from working in the industry, but it would have allowed me to focus on my art. Uh, Along those same lines, if you can get away with it, don't own a car. Cars are incredibly expensive. They're more expensive than you think. And we're just not talking about like the the price tag of of buying a car, but you put together insurance and maintenance and gas. It's a it's can be a, a huge chunk of your monthly expenses just to pay for a car. If you have the option, if you can bike or bus to get to the places you need to go to, uh, if you have to go to work, if you have a part time job, you know that's the best. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't have to feel any. Um, any qualms about, you know, living with family, about having someone else support you until you can get your on your feet or get off the ground. A lot of people do that when they're going to school, whether it's medical school or 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 to get a law degree. So this is think about this in the same way. You know, use those resources you have to focus on your priorities. Um, so number two, you know, a lot of you out there are not going to have a choice but to work full time to pay your bills. And if that's the case and you want to invest in your art, you know, after hours, then you need to remove absolutely all other distractions you can from your life. And you better make sure you have a very good understanding with any other family members that live in your home, what you're trying to accomplish. It's going to take all of your spare time to make it work. So if this is the option you choose, you need to make every part of your life less stressful. First and foremost, if you can afford it, get the most stress-free, cush job you can find. One of the mistakes that I made was trying to work as an artist for my day job and then trying to do my own work after hours. Working a full-time art job is incredibly taxing. You have to show up every day and be creative. You have to take problems home with you and figure out how you're gonna solve them. I didn't have the energy to do both. And it only got harder the higher up the ladder I climbed. The more I wanted to get paid, the more and more that was demanded um, from me as far as energy and brain power and time. Along these lines, don't change jobs, don't move, have new children, get divorced or married while you're trying to make art. You'll barely be able to work a full-time job and have time to do your art on the side. You know, you can probably manage children you already have, but trying to do a full-time job and your art on the side and bring new children into the world or any other dramatic life change will break you. I mean, at the very least, you have to accept, if you are gonna make those changes, you have to accept the huge distraction that's gonna take and you're gonna have to plan for a decreased output if you are working towards your your art goals. You know, also, um, just think about all the stresses that can come into your life in general. You know, just, just naturally, just through the course of life, stressful stuff comes into your life. Accidents happen, people die, just stuff you don't expect is gonna gonna come into your life. So don't add any more stressful things into your life that you have to. You know, if you have other commitments like volunteer work or I don't know, mandatory community service from your meth days, you're just even more surely guaranteed failure. You know, and I know this because I have made this mistake many, many times and I, I still make this mistake. One of my weaknesses is I'm really bad at letting other commitments into my life and that can take focus away from my main goals. You know, it's something that I'm trying to get better at, but it it definitely causes big problems. Number three, and this one is going to be controversial. Uh, some of you won't be able to do it. Uh, I personally could never feel comfortable doing it, but that's because of my paranoia, not necessarily because I have any moral objections to this approach, but the other option is you work on your personal work during the work hours of your full-time job. Um, And honestly, this is kind of the dirty secret of the art world. I know lots of guys that do this 
and, and have done this. And this is how some people are able to make that leap from working a day job to doing their own work. You know, at the very least, you have someone like Orson Scott Card that has been very open about writing his first novel while he was working as a magazine editor. Uh, you know, the morally preferable approach is to make sure you're fulfilling all of your work commitments first. Um, but I'm not going to judge. If you're going to waste time watching YouTube anyway, might as well spend that time doing something productive. Okay, so now with all of that in mind, I'm going to tell you how I'm personally making it happen. Um, this uh, episode is all about me making prefaces, so here's another, another preface. Um, I've been really lucky. I'm not ashamed of using my luck to my advantage, but I also don't want to give you the false impression that I'm somehow giving you a recipe for how you can do it that is going to work without you getting the same breaks that I've gotten or that anyone can do it. This is working for me because I'm a lucky bastard. Um, first of all, I come from a wealthy family. My dad's a doctor, but I also have a big family and an even bigger extended family. So I've always had a big safety net that's allowed me to take risks. Um, I've had this conversation over and over with my wife before where I've said, well, I wanna take this risk. What's the worst that could happen? Let's say that financially we can't pay our bills. We could always, we have like tons of family we could depend on. Our worst case scenario financially has always been really, really good. I mean, fortunately, we've never had to go to that place, um, but we've always had the option. And just to explain that a little bit more, you know, my parents have helped us out financially, even though we haven't necessarily always asked for it. They help us buy a home. They helped us buy a car. And, you know, my wife's family has also been super generous with us too, equally generous to us. So we've never asked for help, but we've received a ton of it anyway. And so I can't pretend like that hasn't been a huge factor in making things possible for us. Um, second, I am one of those people that bought a bunch of Bitcoin and Ethereum early on. And so this has turned out to be a really good investment and that has given us a very comfortable nest egg. Um, and third and probably most importantly, I have a really amazing, awesome wife and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so that's how I've been lucky. Uh, with those things in mind, this is how we're making it work financially for us. When I decided to leave Disney, I originally was going to try and live off savings for as long as possible. Um, remember how I said that was like the stupidest thing you can do? Uh, but after some calculations, I quickly found out that a comfortable nest egg will still go fast if you have no income. Uh, that's the thing. When you have no other income and lots of monthly expenses, you can burn through savings super fast. Uh, and after having this discussion with my wife, she turned to me and said, you know, hey, maybe I can start working full time again. And I hadn't even considered this, but it was really a superior idea. Uh, and what I'm going to say now is, is a really cru crucial part of how we're making everything work. We had been strictly following a budget for over a year at that time. And if you're interested, uh, we use the You Need a Budget System or YNAB as it's more commonly called. And I'll leave a link for that in the description. But when I say we strictly followed the system, that doesn't mean that we necessarily like stayed strictly within a budget. It just means that we were fastidious about tracking all of our expenses. Um, and at the end of that time, it gave us more than a year of data. We had a very concrete idea about what our financial needs would be and, and a good estimate about how much we spent every month. Uh, the great thing about this was that when it came time to have the discussion, I was able to put together a very detailed plan for how we would cover the expenses. Um, when my wife started looking for work, we knew the minimum she would need to make to cover our monthly expenses. You know, fortunately, she got a job that made more than we needed. And since this time, she actually got a new job that does even better. Um, so we're in a really good place. And, but then on top of that, we still had our savings in case we ever went over budget. And so every once in, once in a while, something would come up and we were able to cover it from savings. Um, and since that time, we've also used some of our nest egg to pay off our house. So we don't have a monthly mortgage, which makes things a ton easier. I mean, basically we have zero debt, so we're only paying for the expenses that we need. I also happen to work at a co-working space in downtown Salt Lake City, and we live close enough that I can bike. Um, so I can save on gas, and, and when I don't have a car available, I always have that as an option. 
and I can also work at home if I need to. So it's now been almost two years since I quit and I've made very little money. I basically have one job that I took just because I really like the job. This is the job I did for Jim Henson Studios for their Storyteller series. Um, and it didn't pay great, but it was an awesome job. I was happy to have it on my, my resume. I got to write and do the art and had a lot of creative freedom on it. So it was kind of a no brainer, but that's really, I haven't really been thinking about making it, making money at all during this time. Most of my attention has been focused on making Green Monk and trying to recover psychologically from the burnout of working, making games. And, you know, all this time too, I'm trying to build a following on social media and by making YouTube videos like this. And here we are, and the investment still hasn't paid off. There are lots of good signs, but it's clear that this is not a trivial task to accomplish. So... I hope I can make it work, if only to prove that none of what I have undeservedly been given, the least of which is my awesome wife who is supporting me, that none of this has been given in vain. I really want to be at a place where my wife can choose not to work if that's what she wants. But you know, of course, I still have seven years experience as a viz dev artist. I always have the option to look for full-time work if I need to. So I still have that as a backup. So it's just another one of these things that makes me comfortable about taking this risk. So that's my particular way I'm making it work. Um, obviously it's not a template for success, but I do hope it demonstrates how we are dealing with the particular realities of trying to make a living making art. Your approach is gonna be different, but you are gonna be solving the same problems. So that's the particular way that I make it work for me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. You know where. Please like this video. Please subscribe. And we'll talk to you next time.